The HV-1000Z Micro Hardness Tester. This micro hardness tester features an auto tour to reduce the risk of damaging the indenter. It is easy to use, economical, and has an optional camera attachment for viewing or using micro hardness testing software. The HV-1000Z Micro Hardness Tester. The first thing we want to do is turn it on in the back. When we do, you see what happens is initializes to the indenter and then back to the 40X objective. And before we do anything, what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to adjust the focus of the eyepiece here so that the filers on the inside are in focus. Let's go do that. Once we do that, what we want to do is we want to bring the filers together so that we can set them as zero. The left knob here will move the filers left and right. The larger knob here will change the distance in between. So what we want to do is we want to bring them so they're just barely touching. And after we do that, we want to hit the clear button, the CLR button, and that will set our calibration for the filer. To make a measurement on the HV-1000Z, First what we need to do is we need to focus on the sample. Now right now it's set to the 40X objective, which with a little practice you could probably focus on the sample. But if you haven't worked with the hardness much before, you probably want to rotate this over to the 10X. It'll be a lot easier to see the sample. To do that, what we need to do is we need to rotate the turret to the 10X objective. And if you look on this left key here, upper left key, and below the line it has an A to B, so what we want to do is we want to hit the spec button or the red button that turns it to the indenter, the spec, and A to B again will take it to the 10x objective. As you can see over here, we can go ahead and focus on the sample there. One way to help do that is to rotate it a little bit, the micrometers. Uh, it's easier to see something that's moving. So once we're close, let's go ahead and move it back over to the 40X objective by going spec and then AP twice again. In this case, what we want to do is we want to find, do our focus here, add a little more light. So that's pretty good there. So once we have that, uh, we have the eyepieces in focus. And then over here, this knob here, we can adjust our load. So right now we have a thousand gram load. And once we have that, all we have to do is hit start. You see the uh, begins the load. Once the loading is complete, it goes over to the dwell, which is preset. The dwell is shown here and we'll count down to zero. After the indent is completed, it will go to an unloading cycle. During this whole process here, you don't want to be moving anything because that's how you damage or break your indenter. And then see it automatically shifts over to the objective. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and focus a little bit better on that. And I'm going to use the filer here. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to bring the left edge of the filer to the left side of the indent and then open it up so that we measure the other side. So after we have the filer or the indent within the filer, we'll go ahead and we'll push this button here to accept that value. Now for Vickers, we have to rotate that 90 degrees. And then we measure the other two diagonals. Again to accept, press the button here. And you hear it beeps or chirps when the measurement is accepted. So here we're getting a measurement in Vickers listed here. And that's how we do our measurements on the HV-1000Z. After we complete the measurements, we can now go and print the results. To print the results, we go over to this key here. On top it says time minus, and then below the line it says PRT. Now to access the PRT, remember we have to press the spec button first. 
and then we press the print. The HV-1000Z control panel. When we first turn the instrument on, you see we'll get a welcome screen. As soon as that changes to the date, we want to start changing the date before we lose that screen. So let's go ahead and change that to year 14, and then to go to month, we hit spec time, and we'll change that to the present month. Same thing with date. And then press spec button to get out of that field. Now we can measure Vickers or Nuke depending on the indenter that we have. For Vickers you can see that we have a D1 and a D2 so we're measuring two different diagonals. To change to the different type of indenter for the measurement we have an HVHK on this button here. If we press that we see that we have just one measurement that we have to make and that the light is lit up for the Nuke indenter. So let's go back to the micro Vickers. We can add light, or we can decrease the light that we see through the filer. The time here, and the time minus, so we have time plus and time minus, that would be for the dwell time. So you see we can increase the dwell time or we can decrease it. The clear button, this is used to zero the filer. So essentially we bring the filers together and then press the clear button. Let's put some value on here. You see that clears it to zero, so that's the way we calibrate the zero for the filer. Now a few of these buttons have a line through them. The, lines that, the ones that have a line through them, in order to access what's below the line, we have to hit the spec. So if we wanted to rotate the turret from A to B, we press spec A to B. That rotates to the indenter. We do it again, it rotates to the 10x objective, likewise going back to the indenter and to the 40x objective. And if we wanted to print, we can see it's below the line, so we'd have to hit spec and print following our measurements. Over here shows the progress of the indent. So once we hit the start button, it will show that it's loading the indent. After it's completed loading, then it'll show the dwell time, which will count down to zero here. And after that's completed, the light showing the unloading will come on. During this time frame, we don't want to move the sample during the operation as that might damage the indenter. To start our measurement, essentially it's just hit the start button.